Sometimes it ain't easy to wake up with the sun. Welcome to On the Map, a podcast produced by Music Artist Pipeline and Map Studios. Today's guest is Nashville artist and songwriter Cliff Waddell. Cliff hails from Raleigh, North Carolina, where his roots run deep in bluegrass and gospel. Having made the jump to Nashville, Cliff is on the rise as a traditional country artist, often seen performing at some of Nashville's best venues. Also joining us today is co-host Terry Richardson. Terry is a grand old Opry member, as well as a promoter and manager. Terry is a client and close associate of MAP Studios. Sit back and enjoy On the Map, as we introduce country artist Cliff Waddell. Hey everybody, welcome to On the Map, a podcast produced by Music Artist Pipeline, and I'm your host Chuck Hutchison. Today we have... Cliff Waddell. Is that, did I say that right, Terry? It's Waddell. That's right. Waddell. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, That's Cliff. I, I, That's I, Cliff. I, I'm a musician, so I'm always improvising. I got to make sure I sing this note right and say the name right. <laughs> but <laughs> we, we, today we got Terry Richardson in here in the studio, and we got Cliff, and uh, it's, it's a pleasure to meet you, Cliff. I've heard great things about you. Um, we're all about promoting music. We're all about helping try to get people on the map. That's what we do. And uh, so we're going to just kick this thing off right now. And uh, first, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to let Terry do a little introduction here. So have at it, Terry. Okay, I appreciate it, Chuck. And start with Cliff. I thank you for uh, for coming here on the program uh, here at Chuck Hutchison's podcast. And uh, and like I say, uh, I've known uh, Cliff for a while now. Um, and uh, I, I I loved him today. First day I walked in and and hear him sing, and it, and uh, so anyway, uh, he he's a really incredible uh, musician and and talented singer, and just all around a nice guy. And uh, I'm just uh, here thanking him for, for being on the program. And and Cliff, uh, I got I got to ask you how, how long have you? Uh, I know you've been doing this a long time. I, I, I don't, didn't mean to step in in the way there, Chuck. I I just wanted to um, see how long have you you've been been doing music because uh, I know you've been doing it for a while. Yeah, uh, well, first of all, uh, Chuck and Terry, thank you guys both for having me. And, um, this is a it's a great town, and I, I when I met when I met Terry, um, it was kind of an instant little friendship there. So nice nice to be talking to both of you guys. Um, I've been doing music. I'd say I mean I've been around it all my life and. Uh, I grew up in a in a household that had bluegrass jams just about every week and um, bluegrass festivals all the time. So I kind of grew up around it, but I, I I guess I really started getting serious into music and I, I started doing some writing when I was you know younger. I did uh, well, by the time I'd reached about ten years old, I um, you know I, I I was able to play the guitar and enough to enough to sit down in front of my, my stereo and play along to you know old Alan Jackson records and you know all all the good country stuff and I just fell in love with with that sound and um I guess as a uh as I got a little older and uh the day I got my driver's license I joined the bluegrass band and um it's 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 been you know fair game ever since. So I I uh played in some bluegrass bands for about ten years and um about five years ago, I decided to break away and start my own solo uh, country career. And I, I broke into the scene with a Christian country album that I wrote uh, called Restored. Uh, and it's got, you know, I, I wrote a bunch of songs on there that are there. I didn't want to write gospel songs or, or, or just nothing that was labeled as, as strictly church songs. I really wanted to have some songs that, that, really everybody can relate to that are still country that just has a meaning meaning to them. So, um, that, that album did really good for me and kind of led me get, gave me some credibility for my writing and my singing and so forth. And, uh, it led me here to Nashville, uh, about two years ago. And, uh, here I am. So, uh, I, just I finished. Am. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm as a musician myself. I'm, I'm a, of the same background. This is Chuck now. <clears throat> just different, yeah. just different styles. I've done, uh, I've done a lot of church music over the years, and uh, I never, kind of, I guess, in a similar way with you, you weren't, you weren't particularly wanting to write gospel music, but 
as I always felt like my calling was just to be a musician, you know, and I, I never put yeah. limitations on that, you know, so I can kind of exactly kind of see where you're coming from there and appreciate that stance. Now, uh, yeah, go, go ahead, Cliff. No, I was just going to say, I mean, that's a, I think that's a really good point. Um, as a, as a writer or musician, you know, we, we, we make music and the point of that music is to touch folks and it can touch them on all different levels, whether it's from a, a church pew or a bar stool. So I, I have a lot of respect for, for people that, that do that. You know, I, I, I don't like being labeled as, I just want to, I'm a musician. So I, I, I totally agree with that point. Absolutely. Now, now you said, now you, you're originally from uh, North Carolina. Is that right? That's correct. A small town. About an hour north of Raleigh, uh, called Roseville, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Now you, that's kind of up in the foothills, ain't it? Uh, no, it's, it's central part of the state, uh, kind of up towards the uh, about an hour from the Virginia line or so. So oh, for us, that's pretty far up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've worked in the Raleigh area over the years with my dad's company, so I've I've been up there and stomped around a little bit. Never really, okay. never really did any music up there, but I've been to Raleigh several times. Pretty area, Great place. There. pretty area. Yes, it's, it's pretty area. It's 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 grown a lot, uh, which I mean, a lot of areas have. But while it'll always be my home, uh, when I'm and Terry, I know you can relate to it, and Chuck, I'm sure you can too. But when I came to Nashville, I I found my new home. You know, I, I uh, everything just really felt right, and I, I love I love going back home to North Carolina, but. Um, you know, I, I I really I really feel like this is where I'm supposed to be right now. So. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. Well, Terry and I were talking about that earlier. You know, it, when you when you know you're supposed to be somewhere, you, I, you need to do it, and, and whether it works out or not, it's, it's part of the part of the path, part of the plan. You know, you gotta yeah, right. you gotta be where it feels right. Uh, what we do with my studio here, we we're getting off into artist development with some clients, and uh, you know, so our our interest is in the client succeeding, you know, if the client's disease, we succeed. So Correct. we kind of, we kind of instruct people in the same way. Hey, hey, do what you feel you're supposed to do. And, uh, you know, Nashville has kind of become such a big songwriter town. They've kind of gotten away from the artist development side of things, but I'm hoping that pendulum kind of swings back the other way. You know what I mean? So we're, we're, definitely. we're definitely interested in helping promote and, and produce the artist as the artist so that they can have sustaining careers and continue to do what they do. It's a it's a big circle. We we can't do what we do without you guys, and vice versa. So it's a, a, whether you're a listener in the in the crowd or exactly or, you know, calling people behind the scenes or or singing at the microphone. We all we're all in this together, no doubt. Exactly. But I tell you, Cliff, it seems like I've known you all my life, brother. Uh, but uh, you know, I've always thought that that you was an incredible singer. You know, way before on stage and uh, the way you moved the crowd. Man, I think you do a, a, an awesome job. I want to see one day uh, that you succeed in everything that, that you dreamed about. And uh, I think it's, 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 as far as us, we can help you get there. Now, I got a few questions. Um, as an artist, just say when you were a kid growing up, who were your biggest influences? You know, I kind of mentioned Alan Jackson and a few like that. Yeah. But yeah, go deep, man. Tell us what you're all about. You got it, man. I. I, uh, matter of fact, I'm, I'm sitting right here looking at the same record cabinet that I grew up on. I can, I can thank my, uh, my, my dad for that. He was a good man. We lost him back in November, but he left us a lot of good, good, good memories and so forth. But I, I, all these records that I grew up on can go any, anywhere from the old Conway Twitty stuff, the old Grand Ole Opry, Roy Acuff, uh, mm. Jim and Jesse, Keith Whitley, of course. I mean, you know how that goes. That's a, I, all of those guys in that in that genre. Um, if I had to if I had to name five, I would say Keith Whitley, of course, Alan Jackson, George Strait, Jim and Jesse. I was a big fan of, and, and then Conway Twitty. And mm-hmm. that's that's only five on a really big long list of, of singers that have been artists that I've looked up to. And I kind of gravitated towards each each one of those uh, artists back then for different reasons. And I love Jim and Jesse's harmonies, and mm. um, I loved. Uh, you know, Alan songwriting, you know, just, I, I really, I saw the individuality of, of every artist and I, you know, admired that of all of them. Yeah, I, to me, the best musicians and songwriters, you know, they can draw 
a little bit from everything. It don't matter particularly the styles. You know, if you if you're a good creative individual, you, you can pull stuff even from something as obscure as disco. You know, and make it into something yeah. that's creative and cool. I'm not one that's big on labels. I mean, you kind of have to be if you're marketing and in, into the music business. But you know, there's not really any limitations on creativity. I've never and people that I work with in studio, I don't try to change what they do i try to just help them make it better you know and uh, my studio partner out today we were talking about how the best records ever made were the ones where the guys just went in the studio and just just let it flow so I, we're all I, about creativity around here i i agree one of the best quotes um i've heard is a good friend of mine out here i know uh, y'all know him, uh, joe spivey great fiddle player mm-hmm. he's actually on on my new ep he playing he's playing fiddle on everything and <laughs> He told me, he said, you know, I don't, I don't practice. I make music. What that means is the creativity flows when you, it, it just kind of comes really quick. And you, when you're, you got to listen to your instinct and your heart. I think as, as a singer or songwriter, we can overthink too much. And if we just get in there and, and let creativity flow and not overthink it and not just make it as best as we can, I, I, I I'm a firm believer in that myself. Absolutely. And it's all about the feeling. It's all about telling that story. And if you can convey that feeling of that story, then that you know you're actually on the path to being a successful songwriter. The rest of it's just polishing the instruments and putting putting the mic in the right place in the studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. And that's basically all it boils down to. But we love the craft around here. We've got some young artists we're developing, and I was just playing some stuff earlier for Terry and. You know, from the studio standpoint, it's kind of like performing in front of people. When you get up and you do a great job performing a song and the crowd's interacting with you, they're giving you the applause. You you kind of get the reward that, you know, of, okay, well, yeah, man, the people love this song. It makes you feel good because you've you've offered something. It's like a gift, and they received it, and they loved it. Likewise, in the studio, when we help guys craft a song and get that song, the because the instrumentation, the arrangement, it all makes the song kind of be what it needs to be. And if so, if we're successful on our end doing that, then we find that reward just like performing in front of a crowd. You know, we've we've helped the artist take that thing and, and make it become what it needs to be. And to me, that's just extremely rewarding as a performer also because I'm, I'm on both sides of it. Yeah, we, we love doing that. There's no, no better feeling in the world. There's really not. There's really no better feeling than watching watching a song that, came from your heart, uh, grow and turn into something that so many people end up hearing. And there's nothing wrong at all with, with a little teardrop coming to your eye. When Absolutely. You to song. Nothing wrong with it a bit. I and, agree. Uh, yeah. Agree chill, chill sure. bumps and tears are, right. are super you know, important. <laughs> you know, you know, Cliff, I didn't, I knew you meant, I knew you was an incredible singer. Uh, I didn't know the last two or three weeks, I guess, that I've received some songs that you had written, man, you're an incredible songwriter. I didn't. I didn't see that side of you. So uh, you kind of blew me away on that, man. You're you're really you're really talented on both sides. You got a lot going for you, and uh, I think you got a a heck of a career coming up. I'm I'm proud of you, man. I sincerely appreciate that. I, likewise, I know I know Terry. You're I've heard some of your stuff too, and that's what we do. I mean, a, a good song. And I, I want to say that. Better, you know? I, I want to say this real quick. I know that uh, that your dad had passed uh, back in November. I had the amazing opportunity to uh, meet that great gentleman one night there while he was performing. I couldn't ask for uh, I couldn't see more, a more humble guy than your dad. He was he was a great guy. It was just an honor to to meet him. I see where you get a lot of your your humbleness from too as well. So it was an honor to meet him, Cliff. Thank you, Terry. Uh, yeah, he was a very honorable man. I was blessed to have so much time with him. He spent a lot of time on the road with me and was a, he's really, he, he was, still is my biggest fan. Absolutely. And, uh, of course I got my mama, but daddy was there a lot and he, you know, we had a lot of good times together and he, I, I'm just proud that he went so many places with me and, right. uh, thank you. I'm glad that you got to meet him. Absolutely. And, uh, thank you for those words about him. I, I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah. My, my dad, he was an awesome guy and hard worker. <clears throat> one of the hardest working guys I know. And if I could just be half the guy he was, you know, we, you know, when you're raised right and you recognize that it's success is about really following in good men's footsteps, you know, but, Amen to that. Um, now being around Nashville, we want to kind of 
you know, let people find out, you know, where you're going to be playing at and things like that. What's some of your, your hangouts and places you, people might can find you? Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm in the Valley, Music Valley in the Opryland area, uh, every week. Uh, I'm usually playing on Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, or Saturday nights at either Music City Bar and Grill, uh, right there in Music Valley, 2416 Music Valley Drive. Or the Troubadour is actually going to be opening up really soon. Uh, that's the well-known theater right there. They're going to bring some good music into that every night. And, um, so I'll be playing somewhere in the Valley. I guess that's the best way to put it right now. Schedules are kind of changing and shifting right now. But I'm in the Valley you know, every week, and I post on my Facebook, Instagram pages always where I'll be at. But that's pretty much where I hang out. I found pretty early on that that's where the, the good country music is, and um, that, that's where I gravitated towards. And I play Music City Bar and Grill. I've been playing there over over a year now. Those guys are the really the first ones that saw me and gave me a shot. Um, it's really grown from there, and couldn't be any happier playing playing right there. Absolutely. So. But I, I remember the first time, uh, well, several times, I, I visited the uh, Music City Bar and Grill. Uh, Don Wallace and I was there, and uh, and I asked, I can't think of the uh, steel guitar player um, uh, that played with the Music City Playboys. Uh, but, uh, Rusty? Yes, Rusty. Uh, I asked yep. him, I said, hey, man, how, got, how many times you guys practice? I mean, you know, uh, he said, well, we really don't rehearse any at all. And he said, of he told me who he played with at, at one time, uh, Martina McBride, I think, Leanne Rhymes, and, and then Randy Mason. <laughs> Used to play with Hag years ago, I think, and uh, and then my man over there on keys uh, used to play for Jackson, or still plays for Jackson, uh, Alan Jackson. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, the valley is is where, I, and I found out really quick. Of course, I I, I was there several times uh, back in the eighties and nineties. I'm an old guy, but uh, that's where true country music developed. So if you want to hear true country music, uh, come out to hear Cliff right there at the Music Valley. Of course, there's the palace and school board and, and all those places out there. And it's a good place to hang out. Most definitely. Uh, you, you won't hear nothing but country music in the Valley and at Music City Bar and Grill, especially. And, you know, I think it's important to point out to you that it's a good thing. There's, you know, more guys like me that are kind of coming into the scene. And while it's a traditional country, country music area, Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're putting out new material that still holds those same values and that same country sound. And I, th- I think it's, it's a great sight to see. It's, it is. You don't see it as often as we'd like to, um, as you know, around here, especially. But, um, I think country <laughs> music's making a turn back to country. Uh, I really, I really do believe that. So I agree with you, Cliff. Yeah. We, we hope it's going that way. We, you know, it's sad when you hear the formulaic stuff. I was flipping channels around one time and I don't even remember the two songs, but, here in our area of Georgia, this one country song finished and another one started. It was the exact same key, same tempo, <laughs> same tempo. <laughs> I'm like, it's like, wait yeah. a minute, did they just play the same song? <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> the formula. It was about the same artist. You couldn't tell any different. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it all sounds the same. It does. Uh, and you know, unfortunately, <clears throat> I, you know, being a child of the '80s, I don't know how old you are, but you know, I grew up watching the hair metal bands. It's like they, they they blew in, they blew up, and they blew out. It's just like everything, it's like every, you know, all the men were wearing more makeup and had bigger hair than the women, and and no, nothing wrong with that. But but, but uh, it, it's uh, you know, they uh, uh, it everything got to sound the same, everything got to looking the same, and it's like, man, it's it's just it's gonna blow up and blow away, and you, you kind of see that happening with a lot of this pop country stuff. That's you know the formula is well this works well let's write a song like this and at some point you, you know they're going to have to get out of that that mold and and get back to reality and and just good songwriting anyway yeah, that's, that's I, just kind of my two cents. I agree. Now one of the one of the things I, I wanted to ask you uh, is uh, as a performer as a songwriter you know being right there in Nashville what's some of your advice that you might give for some younger guys that are trying to get up there and do what you do? Um, I would say that what I learned which is, you know, best advice I can give is, is lessons that I learned. Uh, these, these guys that have, uh, that have been here, you know, 30, 40 years, you know, they, they've seen everything there is. And my best advice is follow your heart first and foremost. Uh, come to town humbly. Come to town knowing that, uh, you're here to, to do your part for whatever you're doing and just kind of let, let things happen. And if you get up, I mean, I hate to say it, but I've seen, I've, I've seen it too many times. 
you can't just come to town and jump on the stage and get a record deal the next day and all of a sudden your life's a, you know, a different life. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of sacrifice. But if you've got it in your heart, then, then you know, you're suited up and ready for it. I'd say that just come come to town humbly and come to town prepared to to be a hard worker, to, to write, to contribute what you have to contribute in a very humble way. Uh, I think that's that's going to get that'll get people a lot farther than than what I've seen in the past. And the ones that have come here and they have sacrificed and, you know, eaten the bologna sandwiches and everything else. When they see you come in and you're starting off and you're you're paying your dues just like everybody else did, then you're 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 gonna be respected and accepted in a in a, in a way that will just really help build friendships and everything. And that's what it's all about out here is relationships friendships and music and um, you know just keep that humble spirit and do your thing and be ready to be ready to pick and sing i'm reminded of a a story that terry used to share where they used to book all these shows down here in south georgia and i think y'all booked sammy kershaw one time and Mm. but your partner judy hooks Mm. uh luke bryan used to call her up all the time please miss judy please book me on one of your shows way back before he got big and you know, I, I've always used that as an example of, you know, somebody that, you know, for, you know, he was kind of tenacious, man. He was getting at it, try, yeah. trying to get books and you got, you got to give him credit, man. And the only thing about Luke, I mean, you know, years ago when Judy and I used to go over to the college where he was uh, at Stakesboro, um, we didn't know who Luke Bryant was. And we knocked on the door at, at the, at the dorm, um, when him and his band come over, over there, uh, to, to play and, and they was incredible. Those guys were incredible. But, you know, who who knows? I mean, you know, who who would have never known that we see Luke Bryant at the level he is now? But anyway, you just have to keep going. There was another thing I want to add on what you had to say about uh, reminding people that come to town to try to get into the country music. And this is what I can tell them, too, is um, if you've got uh, any doubt in your mind about getting your feelings uh, hurt and because you're projected at one door, uh, you might as well pack it up and go on back home uh, because uh, if, you, if you can't handle rejection on, on all these uh, the labels that, that you go to, because uh, what Jack Jackson went through, phew, Jackson, I think he said uh, 10, 10 to 12 labels. And uh, before, yeah. you know, before he, so if you, if you, if you, if you knock on, if I had to tell anybody that goes to Nashville, if you knock on that door, if it gets closed, turn it right around and knock on another one, but you can't never give up. You, you never can give right. up on it. You know, if that's what you want to do. You can't. Yeah. So if it's in your heart, then, you know, you're, I, I always like to say, you know, if somebody looks at you and, and says, you don't have what it takes or. You know, this that, and the other. You just have to know in your heart that you have everything that it takes to be yourself. Absolutely, and, that's what that's what um, it's all about, Cliff. Being yep. yourself. <laughs> Correct. I was on a long phone conversation last <clears throat> night with a a fella. He was one of the first top twenty American Idol contestants when American Idol first got started, and he's a client of ours. And uh, he was talking about how you know he's forty three now, and he still has the same fire, the same passion that he had way back when if not more and when it's in you when it's real uh, my studio partner has a saying it's like i didn't choose music music chose me that's right that's right yeah you when it's when exactly. it's that real you, you got to run with it and you can't do nothing with it but chase it you know? exactly right couldn't be any more truth to that exactly yeah. right uh, now i got one more question and we'll, we'll kind of wind it down and just talk about whatever but uh as a songwriter what uh what advice do you have for songwriters that are aspiring and coming up and you know what's your process of songwriting well uh what i do is i keep a i keep a little you know these days it's a cell phone but i always have what i call a hook book and whenever something comes to mind or i you know out out and about and somebody says something that comes across as a song and you know to me i make a note of it and uh i'll sit down and have all these you know hooks that i've written down for the past month or two months and just pick one and whichever one kind of lets me flow and and right around it then that's that's what i do but my process is really just i think of a good hook i'm a i'm just a big fan of of you know good hooks and songs and and uh and also i try to keep them simple i think um I think as songwriters, like I said, we can get so deep and mm-hmm. into thought and lyrics that, that the whole point and meaning just kind of goes away. Um, if you, I, I try to keep it simple 
And I think that's the best way to, to get emotions is, is just simple lyrics that are to the point and say what you want to say. And as a, as a writer, I guess, the, um, what I did, I mean, I, I never went to college or, you know, I didn't have, I don't have a music degree or nothing. I just, it's just like you said, if, if it's in you, it's right. in you. And Absolutely. I, um, listening, listening to good, good artists that are writers is, is my way of, <laughs> of educating myself. That's my way of reading encyclopedias is listening to good writers. And when I hear, when I hear good songs and you hear how good songs are structured, then you can, you just, you know, kind of take from that and, and apply your own concepts to it. And I think putting your, uh, putting your heart into it, of course, like you said, you know, um, it's, it's hard to, as far as, as far as when I songwrite, it's, uh, I come up with a, try to come up with a good hook, but, uh, I go back and look at it, and I said, you know, I can do better than that. And so yeah. I, I love songwriting, and you too, Cliff, I'm sure, uh, like other songwriters, when we're having our conversations, we always look at that hook that comes out of somebody <laughs> else's mouth, uh, and yeah. I said, oh, man, that'd be a good hook right there. And so, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Like, you, you're trying to listen yeah. to the guy's conversation, but you listen, <laughs> hey, man, excuse me, but that'd be a good hook right there. So right. I, I'm sure yeah. you've been there as well. All the time, it's like our it's like our brains are just <laughs> thinking hooks, you know. Oh, I, I was I, <laughs> absolutely. I was I was sitting here just thinking of one. It's like oh god, here we not, go. No, yeah, we get, we're gonna have to copyright this one. But, you know, you're just thinking this stuff off top of your uh, top of your head. What would be a good hit for a uh, hook for a country song? And it just popped in my head. Well, I've had it with you because everybody else has had you. You know, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so, so if, if, that yeah. if that thought of yeah, us out of there, that hook, that's you know, that's mine. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. So. There, no, you're, I'm just kidding. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> but as, as, you know, creative people, yeah. man, you you can come up with so many cool ideas, and all you got to mm-hmm. do is just shape it right to where it flows with the music. Next thing you know. It was like my studio partner, he's done stuff with uh, Dallas Davidson, and he tells the story all the time about how they wrote Honky Tonk, but Donk and Donk, him and Jamie Johnson, and who else was? They're yep. sitting in a bar, you know? And uh, yep. if you don't know the story how that one was written, uh, basically they were sitting in a bar and just drinking a few beers, and they were in between songwriting sessions or gigs, and, and all these, you know, this busload of middle-aged tourist women walk in, and they get out, walk in the club. I forget which one it was. Uh, it might have been a honky tonk sense or somewhere like I don't remember where, which one it was, but they they out there dancing around and some of them a little hefty, you know, and they they out there shaking their drum. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen some of them having a clip, <laughs> and so so oh, yeah. <laughs> so so Dallas and and uh, Jamie and, and the other fellow they were just sitting there just kind of snickering and cutting up, and, you know how guys are poking fun of you know some of the dance moves and stuff, and they was writing down these goofy ideas and they was half drunk, and, and the next day they went to a songwriting session. And, they got to thinking about some of these little phrases they were throwing around, and it's like, hey, uh, let's write a funny song about what we experienced last night. Next thing you know, right. it's honky tonk, but donk donk. You know, how big was that yeah. song? You know, that's not the normal stuff they would write, but exactly right. sometimes, sometimes the big songs come just from funny places and funny stories. You know, absolutely right. I want to. Uh, I want to. Here I am, an old man, but I just want to kind of reminisce. Uh, and I know this is your this is your podcast, Cliff, but. Uh, the time that, um, yeah, this goes way back to probably the late 80s. The first time I met Harlan Howard, as you, y'all remember, Harlan, uh, he wrote Harleaks by the Number. And, of course, he always had a little something to drink, as I Harlan was. But I've learned so much from Harlan as far as songwriting. Of course, now, I think, I think you know, if you ever heard the old phrase, you know, three chords and the truth, I think he was probably probably the best on that. He was one of my favorites, of course. There, you know, back years ago uh, when I was coming up, and I'm not taking away for anything, but I, I just got to mention some, um, some of my writers that I, I loved back in the in the old days, and uh, Dean Dillon and uh, Paul Overstreet, Mac McAnally, and Don Slitz, and those guys uh, back at the old Bluebird. Uh, that's when the old Bluebird was the old Bluebird. You know what I mean? And so, but anyway, Cliff, you're doing a good job, man. I tell you what, I'm so doggone proud of you. Don't know what to do. Uh, I just I just know you're gonna be a, a mega star one day. I, I, in my heart, I do. I, I really do that. Well, I, I sincerely appreciate it, Terry. I, you and know, I'll be right there with you. Yeah, I hope, I hope so. Absolutely. Hat and all. Yeah, hat and all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I got to mention Pat, uh, Pat uh, Patty, and Jeff too as well. Because they, if Patty, Patty hears this, and I don't mention her name, she'll kill me. You know how Patty is, and uh, so. Oh, yeah. I love those guys, and uh, and like I say, you know, you got the whole package going on, and uh, everything's going to be really good for you, man. 
proud of you, brother. Well, thank you, Terry. And uh, I got to say, I mean, yeah, Patty and Jeff have, have been amazing. They've uh, they stepped in and they've, they've really helped me and they're pushing things. And um, I think it's important to point out that that, uh, that connection was because of you, Terry. You talked to them about me and that's where that friendship uh-huh. and relationship came from. So I appreciate uh, that. I'll, I'll always appreciate that from you, Terry. No, that, I appreciate that too. It's just as well. You know, it's all, it's all goes back to, uh, uh, I guess when you when you get my age, I guess it's experience uh, and, and who and who you know, I guess you know, and so. But you can't you can't never have enough. Uh, and I have to say this with all due respect because you can never have enough true friends and networking is what it's all about in the name of the game of music. Yeah, no doubt about that. I feel like I need to cut a love show promo. Right <laughs> you, you've been listening. You've been listening in, to. In, in fact, uh, in fact, while, I, while Cliff and I were just talking, uh, I got three hooks already. <laughs> hey, and, and, and like Dad used to say, you know, when you sing a song, if it doesn't put chills on your back and tears in your eyes, you hadn't done it, brother. So you, exactly right. so you've done a few. I guarantee you that. And I and by the way, I want to I want to I want to appreciate you uh, you singing that song for me that night uh, when we went into the uh, uh, Music City Bar and Grill on the passing of, of of Jerry, my brother Jerry. I appreciate you uh, dedicating to me. Great job. I appreciate. I, yep, I, pre- I appreciate you. Uh, the meaning behind uh, singing Chisel and Stone is, Absolutely. is something you, you don't take lightly anyway. But that particular night, under the circumstances, it was it was an honor for me to thank you to, uh, to do it for you. Man, and I want to think about you, Cliff, and, you know, I've seen a lot of your shows. You always put everything you've got in every song that you sing, where it's cover or where it's original, and that's what you need to do, and you do it exactly to the T. I appreciate it. I, I, I definitely try. Sometimes, you know, we have good nights and bad nights, exactly. but uh, but that's usually – Usually a, a couple of songs will turn a bad night around into another good night really quick. That's I mean, right. it's just kind of how, how music works on us. When you see the people out there having fun, and oh, yeah. that's what it's all about anyway. Is if those folks ain't smiling and having fun, then, you know, we're not doing our job. Right. So when you see everybody having nothing but good times and, and all the stress that, that they brought in the place, just left out in the parking lot, um, right. it's really, really re- rewarding. I'll always be thankful, yeah. no matter how far I make it in music, for having right. having that ability. You know. Well, and and too, Cliff, too. I've always said this, um, and, and and you do, you do exactly the words that I've always said. Uh, it doesn't matter how bad you feel when you get on stage. Don't show that mm-hmm. audience that. You need to give them that right. smile and give them that energy. And I always right. always appreciate you, fans. And I guarantee Absolutely. you that would always come back to you one day. Amen. Good show business. Um, oh, I was just going to say, uh, uh, you, you're you're the same way, Terry. Uh, you know, talking to everybody, and I'm not one of the guys that shows up and does my thing and then rolls out of there. I like to come in there a little early and talk to everybody. And absolutely, make my rounds, shake hands, and that's the way um, you need to do it. I remember, I remember as a kid wanting to wanting to meet everybody at all of my idols when I went to bluegrass festival and stuff and it meant so much to me for somebody to take take their time just to shake my hand and listen to me for a second so I certainly try to return that in my career to, to everybody because I know, I know how much it means to I mean hey we're at the end of the day we're all music fans right. as well exactly so, right where can we find uh, your information for the listener uh, your information on your website and where they can download your music yeah sure um my uh, website is cliffwaddell.com. That's C-L-I-F-F-W-A-D-D-E-L-L. And currently under some uh, reconstruction, I guess you'd call it, but we're, we're adding a store where you can go in there and order some shirts and so forth. And uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Cliff Waddell. I don't mind if you shoot me a request to my personal page. I ain't really like that. You can like me on my music page as well, which is Cliff Waddell Music. And I'm also on Instagram as Cliff Waddell Music as well. All my music is available on every digital resource, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, all that. You can find me on there. And I just released my first single off of uh, my new EP that I'm finishing up called When She Prays. And that was that came out last week. So you can, uh, you can find me on all that and go in there and download it. And I'd really appreciate that. Within the next couple months, I'll be... You know, putting more music out there for you to find. Good deal. 
I think a lot of Terry, he's a great guy, and and uh, when he brings an artist to the table, I know they're legit. So it's it's been really cool to have you, and I appreciate Terry bringing you bringing you on board. And uh, we we may do one in the future, another another podcast. Uh, Terry and I, we've been working with some different guys, Aaron Tanner, and and a handful of other guys, Ethan Wynn. and uh, oh, yeah. so Terry's Terry's got some good good stuff going on. And uh, you know, we're all about promoting artists and promoting what Terry's doing. And you know, now that I've I've been introduced to you and heard your songs, I'm like I'm a fan. So it's it's really cool to just expand our our little circle of people we know and respect and and enjoy your music man it's a it's a great thing to have you today uh, i'm gonna leave the table open for anything that you or terry might want to say as we kind of wind this down well i just uh, yeah go, 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 ahead, yeah, go ahead go ahead terry <laughs> no i was, I, 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 was just gonna, <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna thank you both for uh for your time and for for all you do and for music and and for artists out there like me you know it's like i said it's it's essential we're all in this together and I'm just, I'm, I really appreciate everything that, that y'all do for music and Terry. You've been a, a great friend. Uh, we'll always be a great friend. You know, I'm there for you, brother, if you ever need anything. And uh, just that. thank you guys both for, for having me on here. And I'll do it again anytime. No worries. Thank you so much. And I tell you, I just want to uh, tell everybody that's listening to this podcast that uh, you can look for uh, bigger and better things coming out of uh, Cliff Waddell. Uh, he's an incredible singer and songwriter. Just keep an keep a eye out for him. Thank you, uh, brother. Same everything you said was same same to you. Uh, likewise, just have a good day, and I'll see you next week. Yes, sir. That sounds good. You've been listening to the Terry Richardson Love. Of <laughs> <laughs> course, you know we go edit it that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I got I gotta, I gotta mess with Terry a little bit, you know. <laughs> oh, I need a beer. I need a beer. <laughs> I was kid. Uh, yeah. Well, dude, Cliff, it's great to have you today. Uh, uh, we're going to have the podcast posted. I want to thank all on Georgia.com for hosting the podcast. Um, you'll be able to go to www.allongeorgia.com and we'll also have it linked to your Facebook page and, and your, your social media there. We'll get that going here and uh, should be posting in a little bit. We're on a little bit of a delay because we like to edit and post our stuff. and But it'll be up soon, and uh, hopefully we'll get you some fans down here in Georgia because you're doing some great stuff. We're going to we're gonna close out with one of your songs at the end of the podcast here. And uh, uh, we hope you have a good one, man. I hope I get up to Nashville and get to meet you sometime. And uh, Terry, thank you for being here, and thank you for bringing, bringing Cliff around. And, you're uh, welcome. Uh, looking forward to great things from you. Yes, and, uh, sir. Thank you, thank you, Chuck, and, and you too, Terry. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This has been On The Map, a podcast produced by Music Artist Pipeline. This is your host, Chuck Hutchison. See you guys next time. When a woman cries, it cuts right down to the bone. Like a smooth but jagged stone. Yes, yeah, deeper than you know. Because a woman's heart. It's so tender down inside There's been one too many guys Who've let her down then let her go But she's an angel To her new man Cause no one loves her Like he can When she prays Sorrows melt away He's the first man she can say It gets all her not untangled Not even wine Makes her feel the way he does From the vineyard to the blood She's finally found her savior Oh, and only Jesus takes her pain away and she prays. You've been listening to On the Map, a podcast produced by music artist Pipeline and Map Studios. Our guest today has been rising country artist Cliff Waddell and co hosted by Terry Richardson. At the beginning of the podcast, we heard Cliff's song, Good Morning to the Lord. And our closing song is Cliff's newest single, When She Prays. The only friend she can.
be sure to visit his website and Facebook page and support him by purchasing music and merchandise as we support all of our artists and guests here at Music Artist Pipeline. Join us next time as we feature movers and shakers in the music industry, as well as up-and-coming artists here at On The Map. And she prays all her sorrows melt away He's the first man she can say It gets all her knots untangled Not even why